Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Get ready for a change of season. In Mark 16, verse 1, we read, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. All four Gospels have the story of the women going to the tomb. In Matthew, it was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary who went to the tomb. Luke said, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. John said, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Mary Magdalene is the same woman who Luke told us of that Jesus drove out seven demons out of her. Mary was one of a group of Galilean women who traveled around with Jesus for much of his ministry. Somehow, these women managed to have been in Jerusalem and witnessed the whole thing, the trial, the beatings, the horrendous struggle of the Via Dolorosa, the path of suffering, all the way to Golgotha's hill where Jesus was crucified. Mary Magdalene and her sisters stayed the whole time at the cross until Jesus died six hours later. They were there when Joseph of Arimathea got the body of Jesus, wrapped it in new linen and spices, and they saw where Jesus was buried in a new garden tomb. They saw the stone which was rolled across the tomb that was sealed, and they knew of the guards who were stationed at the tomb of Jesus. And still, on the third day, they raced across the city at the crack of dawn with spices to anoint the body of Jesus. What was their objective? The body was buried with 75 pounds of spices, so why do they want to add more spices three days later? They were not afraid. Rather, they were bold, or some would say crazy. What did they see? The stone rolled away. They entered the tomb, expected to find the body, but they were alarmed to find a young man sitting on the right side. This young man informed him that Jesus has risen. This is a moment to jump for joy. I wouldn't stay to hear anymore, but the angel gave them a message to take to the disciples that Jesus, the Jesus who was brutally, mercilessly beaten and crucified three days ago, he is alive and will meet those disciples in Galilee. Now the women were afraid as they ran away from the tomb. Mary and her friends had no thought that they would find an empty tomb. They wanted to show their love by coming to do things to further preserve the body of Jesus. Did they not hear him say that he would rise again three days? Did they not know the prophecy that said God would not allow Jesus' body to see corruption? Or did they not believe? Then they heard the good news that Jesus is risen, and instead of being joyful, they, were, they left the tomb in fear. You're struggling to make sense of their actions, right? Well, John's account had more details. John told us that Mary found the disciples. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and John, they raced to the tomb to verify the story. John 20 verse 10 says, Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. But Mary, she stayed behind, crying. She did not know what to do, so she cried. Crying reveals the heart. It shows that she had come to the end of the road. Crying speaks loudly begging for relief. The hot tears rolled down her cheeks because the hopeful Mary, who had simply come to anoint the dead body of Jesus, was now crying because they have taken away my Lord and I don't know where they have put him. Her unspoken prayer, bathed in tears, was about to be answered. Someone joined her but her tears would not allow her to recognize who it was. Jesus knows all about our troubles. 
Tears are a language that God understands. Listen to what Jesus said. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? She missed a clue. The gardener asked her who was she looking for? How did he know that she was looking for someone? She responded from her emotions. Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. When we cry, like Mary cried, we might not make sense to those around. They want to help, but our tears, our emotions make things seem worse. What would she do with the body if indeed it was the gardener and he turned the body over to her? But Jesus turned up and he was there for purpose. Mary was about to experience Jesus. Listen to John 20 verse 16. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried, Rabboni, Master. In that moment when he called her name, her night season ended and the joy of mourning appeared. In the night time of despair, weeping and in despair, the presence of God steps in and brings joy, driving the tear-filled night and ushering the morning. During the night time of weeping, she could not think straight, but God heard her loud tears and there he was calling her name. Mary's actions did not make sense to us. Mary's actions did not make much sense, but all she wanted was Jesus. He did not appear while she was running around with the other women. He appeared while she was alone and crying. Your mourning comes when you are still crying, when you are all alone. Joy comes when you are weeping. Joy comes when you are at the end of the tearful journey. Mary's message to you is, don't be afraid to cry in your night season. Don't be too proud or cute to let the tears flow in your night season he hears your tears and he will show up in the morning and when he comes he releases joy jesus joy the answer for your season of weeping are you in a season of weeping my friend jesus is right there about to call your name your season of weeping is about to give way to morning joy